Hello my friends, welcome to the new video that I made. <clears throat> it's Friday, I've got some beers and no one's around, so I thought I'd have a little bit of fun. Not the kind of regular fun that one might have by themselves, more like, um, oh, you know, I've got the place to myself, why should I feel inhibited about talking a load of nonsense into a microphone with some beers? on a Friday and the weather's great. And so I wanted to show you t uh, sort of an, an in exciting new concept that I've been tinkering around with in Max for Live, which I wanted to share with you builders out there. Um, and that is the concept of live sampling into MIDI instruments. Now, the sampling in Ableton is obviously pretty straightforward you know um you can kind of go hello like that hello like that hello like that hello like that yeah and then if you want to put that into an instrument you've got to kind of get your simpler or whatever and then drag that in there like that and then hello 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 hello, hello. that's all very nice and good and stuff but wouldn't it be fun to sort of be able to do it in real time, um, you know, like on those old Casio SK1s or whatever, or, you know, um, at a gig. Uh, I've seen, you know, a lot of people doing this kind of thing, people like Beardy Man and Tim Exile sort of sampling stuff in real time and then playing melodies with it. And uh, it's pretty cool. So here's how to do it in Max for Live and Ableton Live 9. Although this will work probably in Live 8 and Max 5. In fact, it will, yeah, because it's actually quite basic. So the first thing you need to do is, I'm not going to open Max because it will probably, my computer can't handle those types of things. So I've basically built this device here, which is my sampler. And you only really need a handful of things. Um, you, first of all, you need a buffer. I mean, basically, the way that this works is that in Max MSP, when it comes to working with sampled audio, recorded audio, or loaded audio, all the objects need to be referencing each other. So you can see that these two objects here have got the same name. I've called it Live Sample, and this record object here is called Live Sample. The one is the amount of channels I want to record. Here, this 5,000 is how long I want to record for. That's five seconds. And the one is the amount of channels. And then I've got a button here, which is going into this one message, which is just basically going to tell the record object to record when I press this button. So I can go in here and go, ha. Ah. Oh, I fucked that up. Sorry. Ha. Ah. For five seconds, I've got to go, ha. Ah. Okay, and now I should be able to um, play that on my keyboard. That's really loud. Sorry about that. So how does that bit work? Well, um, on the on a MIDI channel, I've built this little very, very, very basic MIDI device, MIDI instrument um, that is using general MIDI messages to play back uh, the sound I've just recorded here. Um, using a groove object, which is referencing the same buffer. So basically, this works across audio tracks and MIDI tracks uh, in Ableton. Um, and that's really exciting. I mean, you could use this for absolutely anything. You could build, uh, you know, real-time beat-based loopers on MIDI channels and then use MIDI to manipulate them. That might be quite a cool video to do in the future. You could build live sampling drum machines. I used to have a Chaos Pad 3 uh, some time ago, and the, one of the cool things that I liked about it was that on the front it had like four little sample banks that you could just instantly sample little sounds into and play a little, um, you know, play like a beat with them. But this is basically like a sort of monophonic um, synthesizer. Uh, not a synthesizer, like a sampler. So I'm actually just going to... Um, yeah, kind of just, well, I've just done it. There it is. If you want to have a look at what's going on down here, so I've dropped my MIDI instrument into my MIDI track and I've brought the MIDI in here into a MIDI pass, which sort of 
splits all the raw MIDI messages into things of meaning, meaning, meaning. Um, and I've unpacked this first outlet here, which is the pitch and velocity, run it into this DG mono object, DDG dot mono object, which means I can kind of do legato. <laughs> Um, and then I've run the pitch of that into an M2F object. Um, and I decided when I built this that middle C, excuse me, that's the beer coming out. Middle C was going to be my original playback speed. So if I go to middle C, there we go. So that's 60. That was the original pitch that I sung it at. So yeah, that got that goes into the uh, M2F object, which converts the MIDI to frequency. Uh, so the MIDI note 60 is actually at 261.63 hertz. So in order to get that to play at one, you just divide it by 261.63. Then you get a playback of one, which goes into the signal object, which determines the speed at which the groove object plays the sound. Uh so you can, if you watch this thing here, you'll see that it changes when I, uh, when I, uh, yeah, change key. And then it's just a case of sort of, um, you know, running this note into a bang object, which then connects to this start loop thing. Great. I mean, the possibilities for that are ridiculous. Let's make a new one, shall we? <laughs> More wonderful. How good was that? Possibly the best performance of my life. How cool is that? I'm so into this right now. I, 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 can't, I can't even begin to think the kinds of things that I could probably knock up using this. Um, so yeah, have a go with that, um, and enjoy, um, thanks for watching, um, by the way, please look up www.facebook.com forward slash he runs hundreds and also Twitter forwards, tw how does Twitter work? Twitter.com forward slash he runs hundreds and also watch me on YouTube. Uh, goodbye. <laughs> Bye.